And we've come to the end of Chib's latest disaster piece. We could say it's unprecedented, but it's not. We've already seen this twice before. Absolutely nothing is surprising here. But what's really pathetic is the Jody stands are still desperately trying to portray this steaming pile of trash as the best thing ever. Nobody with a brain that hasn't been washed understands this. But then you have to look at these people. I've said it over and over again. They've only convinced themselves they like it because they are so desperate to fit in with their little online communities. None of these people have anything going for them in the real world. No friends, almost certainly no job, no future. For them, even going outside is like Dracula stepping out into the sunshine. So last week, Chibs presented his latest dumpster fire, and like most of this series, I couldn't even bring myself to laugh at it. I was just dumbfounded at how horrendous it was. The episode starts with Dr. Dr. Nasty growling at Skeletor and his sister like a rabid dog in need of a pork chop, while Dan, the Plank, Scrooge McDuck, and Professor Snigglefritz are running around in a panic, possibly trying to get away from this episode. Then Skeletor takes a moment to remind us of Chib's cannon destruction, and Dr. Nasty gets split in three. Unfortunately, yes, now there are three of her. Three times the lecturing and growling. What fun! She goes to visit the dog and Diversity Girl, just to remind us that they're still a part of this because apparently we're supposed to care. Then suddenly, Kate Stewart shows up again to talk to the world's most unremarkable ensemble in the part that was obviously meant for John Barrowman until he got cancelled. Then Dr. Nasty version, Who the Hell Cares, shows up and her over-the-top acting makes me want to punch something. And of course she has to hug her lover, then does some more growling at Skeletor. Next, the Suntarans in their new poop-inspired costumes are trying to take advantage of the nonsensical crap known as the Toilet Flux, and Serpent Dude is being creepy. Then Diversity Girl says Dr. Nasty is insane while she's doing some flying stuff. No, not insane, just desperately trying to act like she's insane. Kind of like every annoying, untalented, auto-tuned pop star tries to convince people that they're wacky out of desperation to develop a person Personality. Then Skeletor's sister goes on again about the Doctor's fake past that didn't exist until a year ago, just so Chibs could further piss on the fans and everyone that has ever worked on this show. And I come to the conclusion that he doesn't care about making something that's actually good. He just wants to enrage former fans because he's a sad, bitter little man. Then we have another interlude where Dr. Nasty and the Plank gaze lovingly at each other for a bit, and then Dan literally goes out of his way to tell Dr. Nasty how amazing Yaz the Plank is. What about Professor Snigglefritz? He did things too. Then Dr. Nasty blathers at Scrooge McDuck about, Who really cares? I completely spaced out. Then the badly CGI'd poop costume Suntarans are marching across Liverpool and we get a scene that must be seen to be believed. A Suntaran stations himself inside a corner store and eats all the candy, meaning that Chibs couldn't take anything to do with Classic Who seriously if he tried. Then Dr. Nasty and friends, and I'm not making this up, convince the Suntaran to help them by offering him more candy. Then Professor Snigglefritz's friend comes to join them because I guess we're supposed to care about this character too. Then Dr. Nasty is trapped in a ball with the dog and it seems that he was one of her companions in her not really existent past life because why not but the dog can't discuss it because his brain will kill him join the club dude then skeletor's sister tells dr nasty that she has an obsession with saving things but not this show apparently then dr nasty growls at her skeletor's sister says she wants to use the toilet flux to destroy everything over and over again so it's just a metaphor for every episode of the show over the past three years then dr nasty gets toilet fluxed and i'm happy then brought back and then I'm not happy. Then she growls at the Suntarans and the Serpent Dude for a bit, and the dog is sad because his people got toilet fluxed. Then the BBC needs to make sure it's in line with its on-screen quota requirements, and we get reminded that Pointless Vinder and Dan's friend are still a part of this too. Dan's friend says she's not insignificant. Well, I think the script says otherwise. Next, Professor Snigglefritz and his friend get probed. Then Serpent Dude is torturing Dr. Nasty, and wants to know where Kate Stewart is, because she wasn't nice to him, and Dr. Nasty spends the entire interrogation being annoying as hell. Then we end up with two Dr. Nasties at the same time, and they both go on about how cute the other one is, and I think I'm in hell. Then Yaz the Plank shows up and starts dreaming of the possibilities, and Dr. Nasty says she has a crush on herself. Dear God! Then the Suntarans start shooting at both Dr. Nasties, and I start hoping for the best, and Dan frees the dog. Also, Pointless Vinder got Diverse Girl pregnant, and I mystified how Chibs would think anybody would find this even the remotest bit interesting. Then Pointless Vinder and Dan's friend are in another universe, and I couldn't care less about what they're doing. Then a bunch of nonsensical stuff happens, and the Dr. Nasties end up in Purple Land and pick up our two meaningless characters. Then Pointless Vinder and Diversity Girl get reunited, and Chibs thinks we're supposed to feel something here. 
Then Dr. Nasty goes back and growls some more at Skeletor and his sister. Then we have Daleks. We have Cybermen. We have Suntarans. We have bullshit. Then Dr. Nasty and the dog growl at them for a bit and foil their dastardly plan. Then the Suntaran leader says, You will suffer for this, Doctor. Brilliant writing, Chibs. Then Professor Snigglefritz sacrifices himself because that's all white dudes are good for on this show. Then Dr. Nasty, Skeletor, and his sister meet up with Time... And it seems Skeletor's sister has developed brain damage. It seems the flux has ended. Um, what? So Chibs, your resolution is no resolution. Six episodes for that. Then Time becomes Dr. Nasty and tells her that there will be no more regenerations. Well, if the show had to adhere to the meritocracy, then there would be no more regenerations. But we don't follow that in BBC land, and it's already been announced that there will be a new Doctor. Meaning that Chibs' secondary surprise is just as pointless as his first. What a hack this man is. Then Dr. Nasty gets reunited and wakes up to this. Jesus! But it's not all done. Pointless Vinder still needs to deal with Serpent Dude. It seems replacement Captain Jack, or sorry, Kate Stewart isn't happy with him either. Then they exile Serpent Dude on a rock. Take that, you evil white patriarchal bastard! Then the dog, Pointless Vinder, and Diversity Girl go off to have adventures together, seemingly delusional that they might get a terrible spin-off series. Well, this is the modern BBC, so I guess anything's possible. Then they drop off replacement Captain Jack and Sniggle Fritz's friend, and Dan gets rejected by his friend because he's a white dude that dared ask a girl out on a date. We don't do that in current year, man. Then Dan is sad, so he decides to join the two lovers, and then Dr. Nasty and the Plank stare lovingly into each other's eyes, are about to snog, as they say in the UK, but are rudely interrupted by Dan. Then Dr. Nasty asks the TARDIS to hide the fob watch until she really needs it which I'm assuming will be an upcoming episode. And that was Doctor Who Flux, a pointless, directionless mess with the most forgettable characters ever put to screen and a story that goes absolutely nowhere. How did this get made? As I said, it must be seen to be believed. This mess no longer has anything in common with the great show we all used to love. Can't wait to see what they vomit up on New Year's Day. And that's it for today. I'm Chris from Cultivated Media. Don't forget to check out my new Twitter account, and as always everyone, thanks for watching, and have a great day.